What's up, y'all? It's been a minute since I've done radio, but in the words of Little Kim, I've been gone for a minute, now I'm back with the jump off. Welcome to the world according to Eric, where we discuss all things entertainment, black entertainment. Growing up, black TV was my everything. I mean, I remember just running home and watching the Parkers and hearing the infamous, hey, Professor Ogilvy. Nikki told me how to keep your man, how to get him, stop at nothing. And then having Moesha, I was obsessed with Brandy. <laughs> Growing up, I remember being glued to my television set. Whether it was watching the news with my mom. Good evening, everyone. It's all over. Or Sign teaching myself the newest acquitted. dance moves. Chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup, chicken noodle soup with a soda on the side. Ch I felt a sense of comfort watching TV, especially with networks such as UPN and BET. It made me feel like I could make it on the big screen too. But then one day, boom. It was like they all vanished and were replaced with ratchetness. I didn't know how to feel. Actually, yes I did, that's a lie. The battle for TV representation has been nothing but an uphill one. So I decided to take a journey in search of answers. I've interviewed students, faculty, and professionals in the entertainment industry. But um, I had a question for you. Being a part of a show like A Different World, how does it feel to see such a decline in African-American programming on television? Do you think there's a decline now? Oh, well, you know, I, I disagree with you because there's so many stations. This is the first time I think in the history of television we've had like seven uh, lead actresses that are carrying shows like The Quad, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder, everything that Chandra Rhymes creates. And on all of the different channels, there's a whole new flock of young girls that are coming in that we're just meeting for the first time uh, that were up for the academies, thanks to uh, Cheryl Isaac Boom. So there's so many things that are happening that are positive. We gotta focus on that so we can hope they'll remain and not go away within this new administration. <laughs> What's crazy to me is how people can say that we're in such a good place at the moment because there are black television shows on TV. Woo! Let's crunch some numbers. In 2015, the U.S. Census Bureau said that there are almost 47 million black people in the United States alone. Yet, there are seven black sitcoms on television. In addition to that, black people watch 40% more television than the rest of society. So how are we in a good place? Especially when one of those seven sitcoms is about a high school genius who finds out that her parents are spies. Right. So I don't think we're in a good place. And I hope by watching this documentary that you see things from my perspective. As I look at African American programming as being sort of an ebb and flow in terms of the amount. So when we look at the very earliest decades of television, like the 1950s, we just had a few shows. Um, the two primary ones were Beulah and Amos and Andy. I won't have it. I stand up for my right. And I tell you that this worm is not only turning, but is sitting up and snapping. When did I ever send you out on a hike without a lunch? Two pieces of cake? I'll fix the lunch, you just do the hiking. But because of protests around those images, Africans were really sort of pulled off of television for a while. I think networks really didn't know how to deal with the African American image and they didn't really want to put the effort into trying to make images that were acceptable to a mainstream African American audience. Do you feel that there's a not noticeable shift in entertainment? Well, you know, these things are always very cyclical and I'm old enough to have been through it many, many times. Right now actually is kind of a good wave, Best picture. but you know, you never really expect it to continue. 
Well, here's the thing about Hollywood and race. You know, a lot of people think that racism is, is at the core of the discrimination. It's not. It's nepotism. Mm. Okay, nepotism fuels Hollywood. And, you know, if you look at a Rob Reiner movie or even a Spielberg movie, and you look at the credits at the end, you know, not just the top credits, but when you start getting down to grips and stuff like that, and you see Spielberg and Reiner, mm -hmm. you know, that's who they hire. They hire who they know. Right. So one of the more interesting questions for me is, what is black TV? Fusion TV did this, like, parody type of conversation about a black renaissance for television. And in that was the question of, what is black TV? So, black TV is a show where the writers, directors, producers, and actors are predominantly African American. Okay, but who's in- Alright, wait a minute, soul sister. Before you ask that question, one of the examples that drives me absolutely bonkers is when people say that Scandal is an example of black television programming. Now, yes, I see why you're saying that because Kerry Washington is indeed black, but Shonda Rhimes, the creator of the show, prides herself on the fact that she colorblind cast. Meaning that if you're talented enough to get the role, then you'll get the role. So Scandal is not a good example of black programming. Carry on. <laughs> Who's employing these black creators and black talent? Who's signing their checks? Who's running the networks that air these shows? For me, you have to look past the screen and take in our industry as a whole before you start labeling anything as black TV. Well, let's examine that. If we go back to the 1930s at the start of these sales of airwaves, who was able to afford them? White males. So it wasn't until the 1970s when the FCC implemented their minority ownership policy, basically offering tax incentives to anyone who wanted to sell networks to African Americans. We didn't have any television stations. We had one. So in the 17 year run of the FCC's policy, yes, we went from one station to 10. But that's still horrible because I have over 500 channels. So the fact that we only have 10 networks is crazy. It's disgraceful. So from that point, in 1995, when the Republican Congress was elected, they brought us down. They brought us down to 6% of commercial network televisions. We had 6% of FM stations and 11% of AM stations. So honestly, the progression was short lived. We're not doing too good anymore. And BET is no longer black owned. That was sold in 2003 to a white man. So that's when we look at networks, we need to not only look at who's running them, but why they're running them. It's a matter of historic discrimination. If you start off without the financial means, black people, you can't afford networks. Therefore, you can't afford representation. But white people who are financially equipped, they're perfectly fine. We got TV land over there. We got Nick and Knight over there. We're doing fine. So it's kind of just like we need to look at the holistic issue here. Oh, here it goes. It was about to say it. It's got to be a West Coast show with that type of people. <laughs> I know the show. I've heard that. I can't it's remember. Not baby Bay Kids, is it? No, it ain't no Bay Kids. No. I don't know what the freak that no. was with that low rider beat. No, no. Keenan and Carol? Yes. Oh, okay. There you go. I, I like, I know. You see, that took y'all too long. I need yeah. a buzzer. That's what, what it is. Nobody what? paid attention to Keenan and Carol. Ah, we're, we're not, not going to say it because y'all ain't know it. No, we're not going to do that. Y'all ready? No. <laughs> But Kale is fine, so. Wait, is Kale the, <coughs> is Kale not the one on the Girl, neither one is fine to me, so I really <laughs> I'm like, I don't even one. know which is Wait, which. Wait, wait, wait. Just album. stop. Just stop, okay? There's no, there, there will so be, good. listen, there'll be no discussions Street, with me Dream. Dream. about Solange. What? I mean, that's like me and you making music in the basement. Come on. <laughs> well, I heard that it was received well. Her last album, it was. And that's, and that's the truth. Children especially look to television for role models. And I was thinking about the American family on television and how it was always 99% white Americans and white middle class Americans. So anybody below the poverty level, black or white, could not identify with what was happening on television. How important is it to have different representation of different social groups on television? 
It's so important. Imaging is everything. So when people see themselves, it becomes they become a valuable part of society. So you just can't have a world that everything looks the same. It's important for gay people to see themselves, for black people to see themselves, for trans people to see themselves. Then they know I'm not strange. I exist. I mean, it's wholly important. I mean, that's why I got into the acting, is, is being able to see images of Denzel and, and Samuel Jackson and Lawrence Fishburne and Sidney Portier, all these images on, on uh, black actors that I could relate to because they look like me. I think it's important because we live in a day where you don't know unless you see. So if you don't see, you're not educated about it, you know? So it's important because people need to see themselves and then also people need to see the normality of different groups. Now, in my opinion, one of the best parts of having black programming on television is the way that they address issues that makes certain groups of people uncomfortable. And I'm not always necessarily talking about race, even though there are examples of that. Like that All in the Family episode of Archie Bunker calling George Jefferson's mom Mamie. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I said put it down, you've had enough. Look, Mom, I'm a big boy now. I don't need you to blow my nose for me. Now, will you leave me alone? Yeah, I... Hey, there, Jefferson. That ain't very nice, talking that way to your little mammy here. <laughs> Who you calling mammy? And then you have the episode of A Different World where Tisha Campbell's character, Josie Webb, basically announced to her whole class that she had AIDS. During a time where AIDS was such a taboo topic, people didn't know what AIDS was. It was a proud day when she graduated from Hillman with a degree in English literature and high honors. That was the spring of 1992. By the following spring, Josie Webb had died of acquired immune deficiency syndrome, a disease we all know as AIDS. So that's what I love about black programming as well. I feel like every time you watched an episode, you knew you were going to learn something. Okay, okay, I get it now. We were stopped because we were driving too slow. We were breaking the slowness limit. Oh, okay. Well, you see, I never heard of that law before, but I did hear this other law. It's called the, if you see a black guy driving anything but a burnt out Pinto, you better stop him because he stole it law. Yeah, I heard about that. Oh, but see, I, I thought it was the black guy law, when in actuality, it was the slowness limit law. Oh, phew. thank you for sharing that with me, Carlton. Good night. He's walking very slowly, he has his hands up. Even the helicopter makes the comment that where he has his hands up, he's complying, but he gets to the car and they tase him right before uh, she shoots him. Firestorm of controversy swirling around the death of 28-year-old African-American woman. Officials say Sandra Bland was found hanging in her Texas jail cell. My grandfather came to this country with nothing. He couldn't even speak the language. But he worked hard and he made a place for himself and his family. Now, why can't you people do the same? Hey, my grandfather built this country, man. He fought wars for it. And most places he went wouldn't let him sit down and get a cup of coffee. I can't even catch a cab in New York. You know, it doesn't matter how many degrees I get. All you people see is color. Your grandfather was an immigrant. You're American. My grandfather was born here, Duke. And you people still look at me as just another nigga. Hmm? You don't think I care about this country? <laughs> I love this country, even though at times it doesn't love me back. For my whole life, my parents, my grandparents, me, for most black people, this system has never worked for us. Seven feet. But we still play ball. Tried to do our best to live by the rules, even though we knew they would never work out in our favor. Strange fruit. 
roads. Had to live in neighborhoods that you wouldn't drive through. Send our kids to schools with books so beat up you couldn't read them. Work jobs that you wouldn't even consider in your nightmares. And blood at the roots. Black people wake up every day believing that our lives are gonna change even though everything around us says it's not. Truth be told, you ask most black people and they tell you that no matter who won this election, they didn't expect the hood to get better. Strange fruit. But they still voted because that's what you're supposed to do. You think I'm not sad that Hillary didn't win? That I'm not terrified about what Trump's about to do? I'm used to things not going my way. I'm sorry that you're not, and it's blowing your mind. So excuse me if I get a little offended because I didn't see all of this outrage when everything was happening to all of my people since we were stuffed on boats in chains. I love this country as much, if not more, than you do, and don't you ever forget that. Representation means a lot. Representation is the difference between life and death for some. A young boy growing up or a young female growing up feeling like they're in the wrong body needs shows like RuPaul's Drag Race. They need shows like Noah's Ark. They need that understanding that they do exist and that their life is valuable. Shows like The Proud Family, animated or not, shows like Fat Albert, it shows that we can have wholesome values, we can have stable families, we can have fun. There's nothing animalistic about us. Shows like Moesha, shows like The Parkers, shows like One on One and All of Us. It shows that we can get down and have a good time, but we face issues and we have goals and ambitions. And if networks aren't allowing us to tell our stories, then no one will hear it. And that's a detriment to our society. So representation shouldn't only be taken into account when we're talking about commodity. We should... Representation is a humanistic trait. And we're all humans and we deserve it. But thank you for watching The World According to Eric. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs>